um, I, I think that UK has the advantage that that the, uh, the the users are more educated. If we keep on fighting, we have to do something that helps our customers, and, and that's why we sort of took the extra effort and, and built the payment branch in in, in Germany. Herzlich willkommen zum FinTech Podcast von Payment and Banking. In unserem wöchentlichen Podcast sprechen wir mit interessanten Köpfen aus der Branche über unsere Hauptthemen Fintech, Payment, Banking und Mobile. Herzlich willkommen zu unserem 259. Fintech Payment und Banking Podcast. Heute sprechen wir über das Thema Banking, SME Banking in UK mit Holvi und dem Jochen zusammen. Grüß dich Jochen, wie geht's Hallo, dir im Homeoffice? Gut, heute, heute kein richtiges Homeoffice, heute Urlaub, aber de facto, de facto ähnlich. Okay. Bevor wir starten und auch ins Englische switchen, wir haben heute einen äh, englisch sprechenden Gast, äh, kurz äh, wie, wie bei jeder Folge am Anfang, danke an, eure, an unsere Sponsoren, ohne die das Ganze nicht möglich wäre. Wir haben diesmal die Mastercard dabei, lange bekannt, langjähriger Partner von Payment and Banking. Vielen Dank euch und ja, danke, dass ihr uns supportet und weiter supporten werdet. Okay, so now switch, in, switch into English. Um, we want to talk about SME Banking in, in the UK. Uh, we had the CEO of Holvi as one of our guests here. AJ, welcome at the Payment and Banking Podcast. Thank you very much. Um, before we jump into the topic, do we just want to start a little bit with the intro about yourself and about Holvi? Just tell us a little bit about uh, what what is Holvi about, what what was the idea behind it, and also something about yourself, your background, and yeah, would be great. Okay, okay. So uh, let's start about let's start talking about Holvi. So um, Holvi was founded uh, early on in 2011 already uh, by uh, a bunch of uh, of of uh, computer uh, experts, micro-entrepreneurs who, who were tr uh, struggling with uh, finding the right kind of finance tools to manage their business. And, uh, and as all startups, they, they, they did a couple of things before they then pivoted to, to building this uh, sort of micro-business banking. And, and what propelled them to that was that uh, Ovi received uh, this payment institution license Uh, in 2014 from uh, from the Finnish regulator, the FinFSA. And uh, then the company grew and, uh, and in 2015 uh, launched some pilots uh, outside of Finland uh, in, in Germany and Austria. And then in 2016 um, was acquired by the Spanish uh, bank uh, called BBVA. And then in, in, in 2017, in the beginning of 2017, I was hired uh, as the CEO of Holby uh, to basically then uh, help scale, um, scale the service in, in, a, in a number of additional countries and, and within those uh, countries that we were already in. And uh, a few words about my background. Uh, I've, I've really always been building a new business in uh, in corporate setups so in corporate startups uh, either managing the, the the corporate venturing portfolios like i did in in at nokia or then uh, before uh, Holby, i i acquired a gaming company uh, to to this larger uh, finnish company as as part of that and then uh, then uh, managed that for four years and uh, then was basically called about Holby and uh, and when i heard about it i uh, I'd already seen Holby at, at Slush uh, uh, the, the previous year, and uh, had really I, I really liked their product. It was simple uh, to the point. It was solving the problem. And so when they called me about the opportunity, I uh, you know I thought for a little while and then jump on board. That's fantastic so that's, that's that you also have a, that's a, that you also have a gaming background uh, because that's not <laughs> not so many people <laughs> in the financial services who have a gaming background. Same for me. I was at Big Pond um, and then moved back to financial service. So uh, the gaming financial service guys are always great. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, I, I actually don't have any background in financial services, and uh, and that's that's one of the things that attracted me to all the. Because of course, financial services is is uh, is you know in a, in in this great uh, undergoing this great uh, disruption, 
and uh, and uh, it's it's always interesting to be in a, in an industry where where you know changes are happening and uh, and since I hadn't been uh, uh, working in a financial services company, I thought that again it's uh, it's an opportunity to learn. So yeah. Uh, and you're doing your business still out of Finland mainly, or is it more or less uh, different locations all around all around Europe? So how is your how is your setup there? So so uh, our headquarters is in is in Helsinki in, in Finland, and uh, most of our staff is is in Helsinki. But uh, as I said, we 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 already in, in 2015 started uh, offering our services in in Germany, and Germany has grown over the years to be. To be uh, our key market, and uh, and uh, so therefore, last year uh, we we actually uh, uh, set up a payment branch in Germany, uh, and uh, have a have an office that's been growing. I think we already have about 30 people uh, in in an office in Berlin. Um, so and, and and a payment branch that's that's supervised uh, by Buffin. So so. Uh, We are uh, we are uh, in in Germany in that sense as well. Okay, so before we jump to to the UK topic, uh, just just some questions about about Germany. How do you see the German market, and what was the reason for Holby to to choose more or less Germany as one of the first uh, non non Finnish uh, markets for you? What was unexpected, and what was expected about Germany? Well, I guess I guess the uh, uh, the idea uh, about Germany. I mean, the, the obvious reason for for choosing Germany is that it is the economic engine of uh, of, of Europe. It's the largest. It's the strongest economy. Um, you know, it has a you know the, the population is large and it has a lot of uh, economic activity. Uh, sort of, so so from the from the sort of the top down view, it's uh, it's it's a market where you need to succeed in order to succeed in uh, in Europe, and the. The, the, the vision of uh, of Holdi has always been to be a pan European player for uh, for uh, these uh, micro businesses. Um, uh, of course, now in hindsight, uh, having been in Germany now for uh, for three four years, uh, it, it wasn't the the easiest uh, market to start with uh, in in terms of uh, acceptance of, uh, of of card payments, in terms of the, the level of uh, of Sort of digitalization, um, but it has it has uh, evolved quite significantly over the years, and uh, and and right now we believe that it's it's absolutely key in in in, in being a pan European uh, uh, provider to, to be in Germany. Yeah. Can you provide some some background on um, on Holby itself? Because uh, th we came together or get, got in touch uh, because uh, Andre and I um, uh, recorded a podcast and we're uh, where we're discussing about the Holby expansion to the UK, and then we shortly touched base on uh, your history about the acquisition, um, etc. Can you can you also um, elaborate a little bit on that um, um, uh, about the history of, of Holby and uh, and where you came from? Well, I can I can only speak sort of firsthand experience from uh, from the the second of uh, of January 2017. So so everything else I've heard from somebody else. Uh, but uh, but the 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 acquisition uh, happened in, in March of 2016, and uh, and and was part of uh, BBVA's uh, sort of a. a, a Part of BBVA's uh, digital expansion, or, or you know, building uh, new digital businesses and, and building new capabilities, and uh, they felt that uh, the, the the company had something to something very interesting to offer to an underserved segment, the the, the freelancers and, and and micro businesses, and uh, and the other interesting aspect was that it was outside footprint. Of BBVA, in other words, uh, operating in in large European uh, countries that weren't uh, that that where where BBVA did not have retail presence, so it was also uh, an opportunity to to understand and and learn uh, about those markets. Uh, as, as, sorry, go ahead. And 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 they and they kept you separate, uh, so you still act as a separate entity, and you're not fully integrated into BBVA, right? Yes, yes, definitely. So, uh, as I said, we have our license, a separate payment institution license from uh, from the Finnish regulator, and that's kind of where we report to in terms of regulatory matters. 
on top of that now having the payment branch uh, in in Germany we also report in in some aspects mainly AML uh, to to Bafin as well uh, in, in the German regulator but we have been kept as a, as a separate entity we we run our services as you know under our own brand and uh, and I believe that's part of the 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 um, success of uh, of uh, Holby within the BVVA structure is that we're, we're able to uh, operate independently and, and in an agile fashion. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the, the original team is already in place, the founders, or was there was there a cut after the acquisition uh, through BVVA? So when when the company was acquired, uh, there were I think around. 20 people uh, in the company. Mm. When I joined in the, in the beginning of uh, 2017, we had um, about 50 people. Now we're, we have uh, something around 130 people um, right now. And uh, and we do have one of the founders still with us, Tuomas Toivonen, who's, uh, I don't know if you've, uh, you've met Tuomas, but I think he's one of the greatest greatest minds in Europe around FinTech, knows everything. Uh, about fintech inside out and he's still with the company very much and uh and uh i think it's a it's a great thing that we still have him have him and uh and uh he he really guides us in in everything around sort of uh, financial technology decisions okay great so let's let's jump over to the to the to the uk and what was what was from all besides the motivation to say okay now you now you enter uk as a as a market which is, on the one hand, still somehow from a from a business and regulatory point of view, Europe, but not 100% like the other like the other countries, and from the outside viewing, are still at least uh, could be seen as a crowded market. Uh, so, what was what was your motivation? You said, okay, let's jump into the UK and and, and try to get a footprint there. Well, well, first of all, uh, the the five million, five to six million uh, micro businesses uh, in the UK was was clearly the. Uh, the, the biggest attraction, uh, you know, there's a there's a, a, a large uh, group of uh, of um, people in the UK who are exactly the kinds of uh, people that we think we can serve the best. They're 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 contractors, they're freelancers, they're sort of knowledge workers who are selling their knowledge uh, to larger corporations and need to run their their business by themselves. Uh, you know, they need to know their ins and outs. Uh, they need to know uh, how their business is doing in real time. They need to be able to send invoices to, to their customers and follow on uh, on getting paid. Um, uh, all of that uh, put together, we thought that that you know they are spot on the kind of customer group that that, that we believe we can serve the best. Uh, on top of that, uh, of course, uh, with the UK having had um, these uh, sort of digital banks or neo banks for for uh, much longer than say say Germany, the the country and the population and our, our customer segment is is much more aware of these uh, alternative uh, uh, solutions to banking, uh, and uh, and I think that's. That's one of the most important things when selecting a market is that that uh, there is awareness of uh, of fintechs and acceptance of fintechs. I think that the biggest obstacle of any fintech uh, currently in, in in retail banking is 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 to, to get the awareness and the acceptance of uh, of the general public that that you know they can that, you know that people will consider them as an option and actually understand that they're a better option than the high street banks. And when, when we talk about competition, it's it's really the high street banks who hold most of the this customer base. Most of these customers already have uh, a bank account uh, in, in one of the high street banks. And, and our job together with the with the other fintechs is to convince them that there's a, a better option. Yeah. Um, if you if you compare the market in the UK and maybe also with, with Germany and other European markets, is the is the gap which which you are using uh, the same uh, in the UK as in Germany? Means a target group, the the SME target groups, the sole traders, freelancers, however you call them, who are who are mainly undersolved or under under supported by the existing incumbents. Is this the same situation there, or is there big differences between the markets? 
Well, as I said, I, I think uh, the uh, or our our view is is that uh, that the UK uh, audience is much more educated about the, the the possibilities. But the main reason for using somebody like uh, us is is the same uh, across Europe. So so having having similar needs of uh, of, of being able to get paid. Um, and uh, and and also pay your your business uh, expenses. In other words, get your ins and outs together into a a single single uh, platform, and and having all of that information in digital format so that you can then then push it to your uh, your accountant uh, at the end of the month, and and you don't have to go to the accountant with a plastic bag full of uh, receipts. Is you know those things are. Are, are the same across Europe. Um, I, I think that UK has the advantage that that the, uh, the the users are more educated. If you if you look at uh, Europe, um, um, we all know it's not a a standard market which is across uh, the same across uh, the whole continent. Um, and when it comes to accounting and the tools and um, and the setup uh, in in SME space, this this differs greatly. Um, how how do you tackle that? Because I assume that. Uh, From from Finland to Germany to to UK, um, you need to have different service providers, different partners to build up an ecosystem uh, for the for the SMEs. Well, that's true. So so to pick up on your first point about the Europe uh, not being a single market, that's that's very true, and that's that's one of the things that that coming from outside financial services, I was very surprised to find out about. I mean, the the the, the reason why we went and uh, and. Uh, 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 created a payment branch in in Germany. One of the one of the reasons was that we we needed to be able to offer uh, DEI bands to our customers, and uh, and and the only way to get there was uh, to actually have a payment branch in Germany. And the same applies across all of the other EU uh, countries. And there's absolutely no reason why uh, this should be the case. At least nobody's been able to tell me why do you have to build a payment branch in a country in in a in a European country uh, uh, or EU country when you are licensed in one country. So why do you have to bring additional uh, compliance and regulation uh, in in order to get access to to the local IBANs? Uh, so so uh, across yeah. the across the different uh, across the different markets, I think. This is more of a, a sort of an anti-competition me measure by the by the, the member states, so that they, you know, they make it more difficult for somebody to enter the market. And, and you know, we've been making a lot of noise. N26 has been making a lot of noise, but it, the situation just doesn't seem to change. Yeah, yeah. Totally, so, totally, so, totally. Yeah. So I was just going to say, so that's 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 the one thing that 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 I think is is like the symbol of uh, not being a single uh, financial uh, services market. Uh, and then then of course the other things uh, EU is trying to harmonize. So but 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 still every market is is quite local in in, in different kinds of very concrete things. The, the invoice in Germany. Uh, for uh, for uh, GmbH needs to have the uh, the chairman of the board, uh, the name of the chairman of the board, and and the names of the board members, uh, and the name of the managing director uh, in the in the invoice. Uh, it doesn't have to be like that in Finland uh, or, or the UK. Uh, so so a lot of the things that we do. Uh, around what we call contextual banking, banking for uh, uh, micro businesses, has to do with uh, with getting the, the local um, local things right, getting the local flavors right, and uh, and and you're absolutely right in the fact that uh, that the accounting practices are slightly different. For sure, the accounting uh, systems are are different in different countries. But then again, to to Sort of uh, make it easier for us. Uh, the, the 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 kind of the, the principles of accounting, especially for these small businesses, are similar. So what you need to do is you need to get your income and your expenses gathered together uh, in some uh, uh, format, and and then you need to report them. It's just it you know per per country it it differs a little bit, but still the basis of of collecting your information digitally. Which, uh, for example, the whole series allows you to do uh, is is the starting point. 
Just, I uh, just want to, to to add one point regarding regarding the point about is Europe is Europe really, really one market or not? So it's clearly it's clearly not the case, and it's clearly a long way to go to have that. Exactly, we we, we also saw that because we have as as for our business uh, who, is, who, is, who is who is operating the podcast and, and our website and Holvi account. And in the past, uh, we had that two years ago, and it was an FI IBAN. Yeah, FI mm. and then the normal mm. number, uh, not the German one. Uh, and the larger mm. German players, also larger German banks, did not transfer money to an FI bank account. So we need, we had to switch to a DE IBAN for that point of view. And I clearly agree with you. It's there's no technical reason, there's no regulatory point of reason why you cannot transfer money to an FI account. It's clearly protecting an existing markets and make make hurdles. Uh, so that's uh, that's that's obviously the case. Uh, and that's. Um, and that's uh, not was not the idea for having a single market. No. Actually, uh, your point, uh, uh, my point about getting access, a provider getting access to the local I bands, I think is a, is a regulatory uh, cartel type of a, you know anti competition measure. But uh, but what you just uh, described, which is called uh, I band discrimination, yeah. that's 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 against EU law. I mean, totally. we we fought we we fought in in 2017 and 18. We fought against these providers, and uh, and these banks uh, who were telling the customers of our customers that that you know sending money to an FII ban is is a foreign foreign uh, payment and uh, and uh, you know has a surcharge and, and mm. you know that that's illegal. Yeah, yeah. But but it just happened. So so we we you know we we realized that that we're fighting fighting a trend that that's not going to change and it's not going to it doesn't help our customers if we keep on fighting we have to do something that helps our customers and, and that's why we sort of took the extra effort and, and built the payment branch in, in in germany because we felt that that's the only way to really break through yeah, yeah totally totally um what what I found interesting also also about Holdi, yeah, so as you as you mentioned, you were compared to maybe other other fintech players in the SME and B two B banking market quite early in the market. Uh, so you you started uh, uh, seven eight years seven eight years ago, uh, and you you had the chance. So or in parallel, all these large B two C challenger banks are uh, uh, going at least from a valuation point of view to to the roof. Number twenty six, Revolut, also the the UK banks. How did that help you to maybe uh, piggyback on their uh, on, on on their more or less education the market journey? That you said, hey, that's that's good for us because they educate the market, they educate the people. And if you look at SMEs or smaller businesses, there's maybe not not a clear distinction between business and private people. So sometimes the user experience is similar. Sometimes the needs are similar. So how did they help you for more or less for free to educate the people? You know, I, I think that's exactly to the point that, that I was making earlier about the, the UK market. But but of course, uh, these, these some of these players also operate outside the UK market. And 26, of course, not not even starting in the UK, but starting out uh, in, 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 in Austria and Germany. Uh, I, I think that's exactly the point that 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 the awareness is growing about uh, these alternative players. That it's, it doesn't mean that that if 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 you know you were you were um, given a, a Spark asset um, account when you when you sort of uh, you know turned seven or or whenever people give them uh, whenever people set up their the, the, you know the the accounts for their kids. It doesn't mean that you have to be there for the rest of your lives. Um, uh, but but there are alternatives, and, and in particular, there are specialized alternatives for different parts and, and different tasks. So, of course, the consumer, um, um, the digital consumer account is has the, the the largest or the widest appeal, and 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 it's very natural that uh, that that some of the players in that space have grown uh, um, fast in terms of uh, of, of getting accounts. Accounts, accounts created, but but I do believe that there's also uh, a space for more specialized uh, segments like the, the the small businesses and freelancers across the different markets, and uh, but and 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 all of the fintechs together are helping build that awareness of uh, of of a better alternative than the traditional banks. 
If we if we look at uh, you mentioned N26, if you look at the UK, N26 withdrew from from the market, referencing the strong competition and um, and the Brexit regulation stuff. Um, you did it the other way around, uh, uh, announcing that you now enter the market. Um, why did you do or why do you see the market development obviously uh, completely different compared to the guys from from n26 n26 what is what is uh, that drove you to go to to uk um, instead of other european uh, countries well the the uk as uh, well I, i i mentioned that it's 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 an educated market it has a culture of uh, of contracting and 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 a strong freelancer culture Uh, and uh, and and there are already players there uh, building awareness. Um, I mentioned the figure five to six million of of, of these micro businesses. Mm. If if there's uh, if you believe uh, you know any of the numbers that we hear from the market of of players specializing in SMEs, uh, you know they're they're only scratching the surface. So so I don't think that there is a a, a you know that that that. That there isn't uh, an, an opportunity there to serve uh, the, this customer base um, and to do it uh, at least as well as the, the the competition, or even better, as we believe we can do. Um, and so, so the market is big enough. That's that's one thing. The other thing that that is you know works in our favor um, is is the fact that uh, in the UK uh, the I bands are not widely used, but they use their sort codes and account numbers. Which uh, which we uh, get access to as well. So again, from the payments, from the sort of the core payments point of view, uh, we uh, we do not have the same uh, sort of localization obstacles that we would have in in another interesting market, say France. Mm-hmm. So that that's an, that's another thing that uh, that works in the in the favor of the UK. Um, and and then thirdly, uh, I I think that uh, that if if you just look at the uh, the the you know the the three large markets in Europe uh, they are the UK um, Germany and, uh, and and France uh, in in terms of digital banking and uh, and I think that uh, that uh, rather than at this point going to to France it, it it made more sense for us to go to the UK regardless of Brexit yeah. And how do you tackle the regulatory stuff? So um, probably after after Brexit, you cannot passport uh, your licenses um, uh, to the UK. You need to apply for a local license. Is that the plan? Do you have a license already? So how do you tackle it from from like a regulatory point of view? So so from the regulatory point of view, when uh, last year when when uh, Brexit you know it became more more um, real that. That Brexit was really, really going to happen. Uh, the FCA already uh, launched uh, this um, sort of grace period uh, uh, trend. What, what was the name of it again? Transitional uh, TPR, I think, is the the, mm-hmm. the the short version of it. But anyway, there's like a three year grace period uh, that uh, that you could apply for uh, uh, coming from the EU. Uh, uh, for your license, and uh, and we were granted that um, uh, last year already. And now, now when uh, when when kind of Brexit entered into force in in in, in January, they said that there's going to be uh, a transition period until the end of this year, and then after that, that three year grace period starts. And and we believe that there's enough runway there mm. to to um, you know build the business and uh, and then see what happens during that uh, three-year um, TPR period. Um, uh, nobody knows, uh, at least we don't know, and we haven't heard from anywhere, uh, how how then uh, FCA, uh, the local regulator, is going to, what kind of an approach are, are they going to take towards uh, people like us? But of course, uh, you know, if if the, the if the business if and when the business is is um, uh, big enough and uh, and uh, merits uh, a license, we will then uh, then do whatever the local regulation uh, demands us. But for the for for this year, the transi- during the transition period, we passport just like we would passport in the EU, and after that, we have that three year period to figure out how things go. Oh, okay, great, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
So next to the Brexit and at the moment, I think there's no no uh, um, chance to have a podcast or any type of discussion without tackling the Corona thing. How do you see at the moment the combination of Brexit and Corona in the UK, which is a which is a quite special situation, and I think also for a lot of businesses a challenging situation, um, mainly that. The SME target group, as at least that's the case in Germany, is, is, is hit first from that topics, at least from the corona topics. How do you see that for your business, threat or chance, or how do you need to adjust your business or your offering towards uh, the corona situation? Well, uh, you know, from the customer point of view, I, I think pretty much the worst thing that can happen to a lot of our customers is the fact that everybody is inside and, yeah. and that doesn't go go yeah. about and, and, and do things. We have uh, segments uh, like um, uh, dance and yoga teachers, masseuses, you know, people who who run their small business uh, and, and, and sell their, their kind of, you know, their knowledge to, to, to uh, other consumers. And, and these people, of course, uh, you know, they, they saw their business go go away like, in, a, in in one night yeah. so so that's that's awful and uh, and we've been trying to put together a lot of different uh, uh, kinds of information on on different government programs and, and other stuff for, for these people and uh, and we're also taking uh, taking measures to, to lower some of the prices and uh, and uh, and waive some of the fees uh, for these people for the for, you know for the period um, but but you know, if, if you look on the, the opportunity side, of course, a lot of the business goes digital. Mm. And, uh, and, and and we've seen uh, customers uh, adopt uh, digital banking uh, and because of that. So there's there's also been uh, some uptick in demand of, uh, of, of new business accounts uh, very recently in, in the past few weeks. Um, uh, but, but, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that if our customers aren't doing well, then we aren't doing well. So, so, so far, so good. So far, our customers have been transacting and they've been using their, 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 uh, services and, and, and bank accounts. But, uh, but I'm, I'm really worried about their, you know, their financial health going forward if this continues for long, because normally these freelancers and sole traders and small businesses don't have huge cash reserves and, and still they, yeah. they need to pay money out. Uh, so, so I really hope that we can get this uh, this uh, lockdown mode uh, done with. I, I mean, of course, in a in a responsible and healthy way, but still, uh, this is this is killing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, small businesses. Totally, and I think it's not it's not different here. So uh, I think that's more or less the challenge in every market and the discussion about how to solve or how to how to more or less kill the lockdown, but how long that will take. Eh? And sometimes a lot of SMEs that don't have don't have the power to survive two, three, four months with maybe no revenue. Yeah. Eh? So so um, are there? I think I only know it from the from the German side. Are there any government funded programs in the UK where whole we can can in that case, profit from that you distribute them to your SMEs and help them to survive in these in these tricky times. Um, many of these government programs uh, have to do with uh, with with loans, um, mm. guaranteed loans in one way or another. And because we're a payment institution, uh, we're not um, uh, capable of, uh, of 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 taking part in these lending schemes um, in in the different markets. Um, but uh, but. And, and and we haven't yet found a way to to be able to uh, sort of distribute government funds uh, funds in any of the markets. But of course, we're we're constantly monitoring the situation. But right now, we're we're not taking part in those schemes mm -hmm. just because we can't. I mean, mm -hmm. not because we we didn't want to. We absolutely want to do that. Yeah. So, the, so that means you have plans also to enter the loan and the lending market midterm, which means an upgrade or a change in your in, in your license setup. But from my, from my point of view, I would assume that lending or loans, no matter if we have Corona times or not, is a big demand from the SME SME side, right? So that means it could complete your your, your offering. Oh yes, yes. Uh, I think that that from uh, from 2017 when I joined, we've been looking at uh, at different kinds of. Uh, of um, uh, lending schemes and uh, and and uh, of course uh, based on 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 the customer need, as you say, there's there is clearly a need in our customer segment for uh, 
for managing short term gaps in cash flow. You know, one of the the biggest um, sort of um, pain points for uh, for these uh, for these customers of ours is uh, that uh, their their um, their customers pay them late. Mm-hmm. And they they pay them late in, intentionally. Mm-hmm. So these large companies that are using contractors for for this and that, uh, you know, they're they're managing their cash flow and uh, and they're of course paying the the you know the, the larger uh, companies uh, faster. And uh, and this happens across all markets that that uh, that these freelancers are getting paid late, uh, uh, sort of. Uh, uh, deliberately and uh, and yet again they have their bills to pay so so there's clearly a need for um, for for some sort of a cash flow related uh, lending solution uh, but nothing to to announce yet I mean mm. as I said we've been sort of contemplating that uh, for for quite a few few years. So uh, coming coming directly to that point, there is a lot of factoring startups, um, at least um, here in Germany, uh, tackling that problem. Um, have you thought about um, partnering partnering with uh, factoring startups or even um, specialized factoring banks that um, offering kind of white label solution to your to your clients as part of the Holby offering? Yes, we have thought of that. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just. Okay. Um, do you, do you see from from the incumbent point of view any type of uh, reaction from their side that they see? Okay, there are now there are now players like Holvi in the market, and they they are tackling and another segment means the SME segment. Or uh, and they need to react from an offering point of view, product point of view, communication point of view, or do, or are they still more or less in a in a reactive mode and just look at you and see what happens? I think there are. Uh, I, I think that's a great question. Uh, uh, I think there are there are three types of uh, of activity I'm I'm uh, uh, sort of witnessing right now in the market. The the probably the the, the most um uh, sort of common practice is is that uh, either do nothing or actively move out of the segment mm-hmm. in other words uh try and especially with the sort of the, the, the mid-sized banks um some of these these banks are saying uh you know we need to uh focus on the the profit pockets defending the profit pockets This is a, a difficult segment to handle, uh, you know, the ticket size, uh, you know, the ARPPA, the average uh, revenue per paying account isn't that much, uh, and they still demand uh, proper service. So, so either sort of actively moving out of that, that segment or, or then just not paying attention to that segment at all. And that's probably, as I said, true to the the sort of the mid-size uh banks um larger banks tend to either uh, uh sort of wait and see uh, or then do something uh sort of as, as a countermeasure build uh, their own own kind of service uh or then the third thing is partner with a fintech and and, and provide in partnership uh services to this particular segment so so uh, it it kind of varies but uh but what i what i think is going to happen going forward is that that especially in this interest uh, rate environment that uh, that banks are more and more going to focus on the larger sized smes and uh, and and step out of this uh This segment, I, I don't think that they can make it with their cost structure that they can make mm. it profitable enough, and, and in particular with their compliance structure, you know, being the financial supermarkets they are, I don't think that they have the agility to to do sort of to do uh, to to create services for this kind of a segment. Mm. Okay. But that's just me saying. I'm sure that uh, they disagree. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they had to. <laughs> that's that's their that's their role uh, to disagree on that. Yeah. <laughs> If, if you look at um, um, your international exposure, um, there's there's surely 
some some learnings from a market that um, you can benefit of going to another market. Um, so have you have you figured out some things that uh, are special in the Finnish market that helps in the German market or in the German market helping you for the um, UK expansion or vice versa? Uh, well, well, on the if if you talk about the the, the segment in general, what we've learned is that the 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 the, the the needs, the the kind of what we call jobs to be done for for these uh, these uh, uh, sole traders and, and freelancers, they're the same across the different uh, geographies. But the implementation of those jobs to be done is uh, is is local to to a varying degree. Uh, we already touched the accounting stuff. Uh, you know the the collection of of the information is pretty much the same uh, across all of the markets, but then the interpretation or the pre presentation of that uh, information to authorities varies depending on what are the the, the thresholds for for VAT liability and uh, and uh, you know what what do you need to declare and what do you need not declare and what can you deduct from your income and what you can't. Those things are then. Than, than uh, local. Uh, I already mentioned the the invoicing being uh, an area where where there is a, a an EU directive uh, on invoicing, but that very much focuses around around how uh, prices are presented, how VAT needs to be uh, separately presented, and and so forth, and uh, and leaves a lot of interpretation for for local uh, laws. So so you need to kind of get into into uh, uh, a varying degree of localization per market uh, if you if you really and truly want to serve uh, uh, this this particular segment because that context comes from that uh, that local side uh, in, in terms of re in terms of regulation if you just do the passporting uh, and 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 don't go sort of for deeper regulatory um, uh, integration as we did with Germany then then you're you're always going to be slightly uh slightly uh at, at a disadvantage to to the local player okay how is um um as as far as far as i know bbva is also invested into into atom uh in for for the uk how is the interaction from bbv bbva side between companies who maybe not have a total overlap but i think atom also has business loans that's something which is which is not yet there on your side. Is there any interaction or do you see somebody like Atom just like another player in the market and that's, and that's it? Well, uh, we, we have discussions with Atom from time to time and, uh, and, and uh, we, we try to look for different ways of, uh, of cooperation now that, that we are in the, in the UK market uh, simply for the reason that, that we know them and, uh, and they're a great bunch, Mark Mullen and, uh, and, and, uh, and his team. I, I, I really liked, uh, like, you know, interacting with them, but, uh, but so far, uh, you know, of course, any, any kind of collaboration or cooperation needs to be based on, on mutual interest. And, uh, and, uh, even though we've tried to discuss some, some ideas from time to time, we haven't really, being able to sort of prioritize on both sides something that would would then come to fruition but uh but i'd, I'd really love to work with those guys they're they're you know they're a great bunch and i think they're doing very well mm, okay but that could also that's maybe that's maybe uh, not a bbva thing that's maybe okay they they did a good job they are they're open they're discussing with everybody that could also happen uh or being being with another player who has nothing to do with bbva so the shareholder thing has nothing to do with the, with the interaction or No, BBVA is not forcing us to do anything. Mm -hmm. If if you if, if that's what you mean, there, mm -hmm. uh, I think they're smart in that way. That uh, that there needs to be business on both sides uh, okay. for it for it to make sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, if, one last uh, question from my side. Um, if I if I look at um, the Nordics in general, um, there's so many well known big startups uh, that came from the Nordics and uh, and became international and are 
to some extent household brand names uh, in the meantime. Um, what do you do guys differently <laughs> um, that um, you are um, um, scaling internationally so fast and so professional and so good? Uh, because um, um, if, if you look at uh, Germany or UK or uh, France, uh, the larger markets, there is always also some, some startups that scale internationally, but uh, we don't have such a great history uh, like you guys in the Nordics. Is it, is it just the smaller domestic market market that make you think of going international from day one or what is what is the secret sauce um, to build so many great startups from from the Nordics uh, well first of all Nordics is is, is a very uh, very sort of heterogeneous uh, uh, place to start with so so Finland is very different from Sweden which is very different from Norway which is different from Denmark so so while uh, people people sort of uh, bundle us all together many times I would say that every country has its is its own good reasons why why there are um, you know good companies coming out uh, out of uh, out of these countries I think a lot of the really big um, um, sort of uh, scaled startups uh, most recently that come to my mind have come from Sweden uh and uh and and i think that the reason is that that the, the the culture there the startup culture there has been at least if i compare it with finland has been there for uh, uh a little longer it's a, it's a larger country than finland they've, they've got about double the size um uh, of, of finland in terms of population and of course access to capital uh it's a it's a very rich country and with that with the success of uh Of, of some of the startups, uh, you know, there's there's money that's being reinvested. There's there's capabilities that are being reinvested into into those uh, into those companies. So so at least for the for the Swedish um, successes uh, of late, I I would say that those are probably some of the underlying reasons. And then again, I'm not a, uh, an expert on on the the, the Swedish uh, the startup scheme uh, in Finland. Uh, I think we've had some. Some startup successes uh, in, uh, in in particular in gaming, and again that that is from uh, from a long culture of uh, of, of gaming companies, uh, online gaming companies, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, now we're starting to get good startups from from other other areas like uh, like fintech as well. But uh, but again, it's it, I think it's once you know success breeds uh, success, and and that's that's what's happened in. The, in at least Finland and Sweden, to my understanding. Okay. Um, also, one one last question from my from my side. If you if you look at your your entering and your entering process to the market UK, what was the most unexpected thing from your side? Was it okay? This this was clearly uh, uh, seen completely different before you entered the market, and now after some times so you have a little bit more <laughs> experience. What what was totally unexpected? Well, there there isn't. Um, I'm I'm trying to think on my feet. There isn't a a single thing that that really sort of took us took us by surprise uh, because we were we we were sort of doing these small pilots and uh, surveys uh, before we entered. Uh, but but maybe the the level of scrutiny that you need to have a, in in terms of. Uh, Of uh, fraud and, uh, and and financial crime is is something that we knew going in that that it, you know we would need to be careful there, but but it's 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 clear that that all of the people who warned us uh, you know were were talking about the right thing. Okay, good. So. I think that was 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 a quite quite good round. Also, um, all of my questions are more or less done. Anything from your side, Jochen, to add? No, no. Many many thanks. Uh, great insights. Yeah. AJ, something something you want to 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 end up to our audience uh, as famous last words? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not last words. Uh, <laughs> last for, last for the podcast. Dad. <laughs> Let's take it to be famous. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, no, I, I, I wish all the listeners, uh, but, you know, uh, a healthy, healthier spring than what we've seen so far, and uh, and uh, and I know we'll we'll pull out this 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 together. So yeah, uh, yeah. Well, good luck, everyone. Yeah, same to you. Good. Then thanks for your time. Thank you. And thanks for the insights.
Good. All right. Thanks. 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 Bye. Bye. Bye.